Joining me now, Pam Bondi, former Florida Attorney General and America First Policy Institute Law and Justice Center co-chair, and Matt Whitaker, former acting U.S. Attorney General and AFPI Law and Justice Center co-chair. Both of them helped to author a very good report uh, on the Durham report, which I happened to read uh, the Durham report, and I happened to read the FP, F a f p i report um let me talk begin with my pal pam bondi you heard uh aisha husney talk about adam schiff and other democrats uh, attacking durham i'm trying to figure out on what grounds pam bondi to me this is about as cut and dry as possible there was no such thing as russian collusion six ways to sunday they've proven this yeah, that's exactly right. Larry, you just summarized the entire Durham report. It was fake. Everything they did was fake. There was no Russian collusion. They used lies, false information to obtain a FISA warrant to go after the Trump campaign. And not only that, the Clinton campaign briefed then Vice President Biden on their plans to vilify candidate Trump. So it's unbelievable. And one other point that's very important, there have been no reforms in the FBI that must be made to protect our country. Uh, uh, Matt Whitaker, hang on one second. I just want to, I'm not going to cross-examine Pam Bondi. I just want to ask her another question. Pam. Cross-examine me. Uh, never, never, love. But um, here's the thing. As I understand it, from the Durham report, maybe not, maybe it was other sources, um, not only was former Vice President Biden briefed on this, President Obama was briefed on this. Uh, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch was briefed on this. So it was all of them. And, of course, Ms. Hillary Clinton, who financed and uh, pushed this whole phony business, was also in that briefing. Now, is that not true or what? Yeah, and, Larry, for years, you know, we've all been talking about the Steele dossier. And this is who the Clinton campaign hired, Christopher Steele, who created this false narrative, completely fake narrative, about Russia collusion. And yes, it's, it's all of these individuals were briefed, knew that they were attempting to vilify a presidential candidate in a presidential election. Does that sound familiar to 2024, by the way, what's happening right now? And, um, and it was all false. Everything was false, and, and it, it was run out of headquarters, just like what's happening now, meaning D.C. headquarters of the FBI, and these same yeah. things okay. are still happening. Let me, let me get to, to Matt on this. Matt, I mean, look, when, I, when this first came out and we reported on it and we had a number of segments on it and so forth, basically, to me, you tell me, I think it completely, utterly, totally exonerates former President Trump. Not only does it exonerate President Trump, but it also makes the entire Mueller investigation, the entire crossfire or hurricane investigation, completely unnecessary and a waste of time and money. And, you know, as someone that when I was thrust into the Mueller investigation was ripped apart, uh, you know, from stem to stern, I'm telling you, this was uh, the left's uh, dream was to bring down a president with false accusations and to see Adam Schiff, uh, you know, kind of be holier than thou and, and take that tone with John Durham, who is a 40 year DOJ professional who does did nothing but report the facts and to have somebody like Adam Schiff, who has no credibility, try to cross examine him and poke holes in a stellar report. I think is embarrassing for Adam Schiff in California, quite frankly. Matt, we, uh, the yep. FBI, the FBI is in very bad shape with all this. Yeah. But this, I just want to, the CIA was also involved cooperatively pushing stuff across the transom, if I'm not mistaken. No, you're right. All the intelligence, including CIA and the director of national intelligence, were all part of this. They all had knowledge. They knew Hillary Clinton's campaign was going to create a false Russian collusion narrative. And at the same, and, you know, and Jim Comey was in that meeting with the president and the vice president when they all got briefed on the Clinton campaign right. plan. And the fact that he didn't mention that as this case was being opened and starting to move forward was, was, a, was a complete travesty. And, and again, to Pam's point, none of these reforms have been made. The FBI sits exactly uh, as they were vulnerable to another one of these as we head into 2024. Well, the FBI, Pam Bond, the FBI totally politicized. We know that. We know who the people were and so forth, and they're all in the Durham report. 
Um, I guess the FBI could be restructured. I don't know enough about the FBI. But, Pam, whoever the next president is, Joe Biden won't do it, obviously, but presumably yeah. the next president has some integrity, okay? Uh, that person, he or she, has got to clean house at the FBI. The FBI... The, a lot of those players are still there. Some of the most famous ones may be gone, but a lot of them are still there. Christopher Ray is still there. Uh, he wasn't complicit in this part of it, but he's got his other problems developing with this Burisma business that we're going to cover in a minute. But, Pam, you're just going to have to clean house in the Washington Bureau of the FBI. Do we not? I mean, isn't that the real solution here? You, you have to. And, you know, it's easier said than done because there are thousands and thousands of agents throughout this country. Matt and I always say there are many great men and women of the FBI, but you know what the problem is? They're leaving. The good men and women are leaving because of what's happening, what they're learning happened at HQ. And that's not going away. And it's going to be very difficult to recruit and retain. So you're going to have to clean house at the top. You're going to have to go to local sheriff's offices to recruit and ask them to give you great qualified individuals to come in to take the place because recruitment and retention is so important because right now they're focusing more on diversity than they are qualifications and that can jeopardize lives and investigations. And Larry, you're an economist. Think of the multi-millions of dollars these fake investigations cost the taxpayers of our country. Well, that's all true. Um, Matt, though, you know, I mean, I think probably the average FBI agent the old G-men out there in the countryside are probably pretty darn good. I think it's this Washington crowd. I've even been told by a lot of sources the New York office completely disagree with what the Washington crowd was doing. Um, we don't have time to explore that. But, Matt, the other point I want to make before I let you both go, and appreciate your time very much, as always, people are talking about the Justice Department. Look, the Justice Department, the AG is appointed by the president, and all the policy people appointed by the president. Justice Department not, is not independent. The Justice Department just needs people with character and backbone for a neutral application of the law and stop this incredible, incredible politicalization that's going on. It seems to me that's the issue. Yeah, they need to get back to the basic blocking and tackling of law enforcement to do cases for the right reason to not target political enemies of the president. But, you know, I think it's so important to point out is that the AG is not independent from the White House and the right. president. Right. But, you know, but but the White House should not influence or, you know, target uh, for the Department of Justice individuals to prosecute. And I can't tell you, I think that's exactly what's happening right now with the Donald Trump investigations. You know, they the White House through Merrick Garland, is targeting Donald Trump. And it's really, you know, it's the people are policy. And so you put Merrick Garland in there, and that's the result you're going to end up. Yeah, it's politicalization. Some people call it weaponization. Um, what you want is neutral application of the rule of law, which is a founding bedrock principle of this great country, which has been ridden roughshod by this whole crowd. Anyway, Pam Bondi, thank you. Uh, Matt Whitaker, thank you. AFPI report. People, you should go and go online to have a look at. It's very good work.